Hello YouTube, this is Lollybo, and you're watching my first ever StarCraft 2 uh, shout, beta shoutcast. Um, and I really uh, like StarCraft 2 system actually. I like how they record all of your uh, match replays, you don't have to manually save them. It has some pretty sick stat tracking systems. And um, what I especially like is how you can see graphs of all the resources and whatnot, and um, all the build orders, even of people who, who um, aren't in the same games as you. So you can check out the top people in your ladder and check out their strategy, their build orders, um, their resource graphs to see what they're doing versus what, uh, what, you're, what you're doing so you can get better at the game. So that's pretty cool. Um, right now you're seeing two people who um, are supposed to be really good at this game, like pro level or near pro level. I think um, this game was also on the StarCraft 2 beta live stream that you can watch from, um, watch from the internet. So um, these people are pretty good. Uh, we have Cloud Song and Clutch apparently, and um, it's Zerg versus Protoss. As you can see, the Zerg player just did something pretty interesting here. He built two assimilators and quickly canceled them. He didn't build those assimilators in order to get gas. I think it, right now it's too early to build um, an assimilator. As you can see, the Protoss player doesn't even have his own assimilator up. The reason why the Zerg player built um, the assimilator um, was because it allowed him to quickly lower his pop cap. Um, as Zerg it's different from the other factions because they build buildings by sacrificing a worker. So by putting a drone and making a build extract real quick, um, you can lower your pop cap real fast if you hit the, the, the ceiling to delay it just a little bit so you get those drones out a little faster and um, delay the overlord a little bit. So that's just um, a micro thing. It's a good idea to get your resources up and running as fast as possible because um, a large part of StarCraft is, is micro, getting your economy up. Um, getting more resources than another person more efficiently so you can make more units to kill them better and faster. You know, that's a lot of what StarCraft is, math and um, and, uh, and macro and your economy and, and your build order. So um, that's a neat trick that the Zerg player um, did. He, he's up to 16 workers right now um, and he's building a pool. So. Um, that's an interesting thing to do with the Zerg. A lot of players don't even build um, the spawning pool early. They don't even Zerg rush. They just go for drones and get their economy up and running. Zerg in this game, I think, is a very macro-heavy faction. When I play a Zerg, I, I click more than I click with the other factions because you have to um, select your drones. You have to build drones like the other factions, too. But you also have to have the queen uh, and get her to spit on things and get her to, get her to build more creep. Um, the Zerg player also sent a drone over their base to harass and just like dick around. Um, the strategic value of this is several fold. First of all, it gives you information. You get to see um, what your what the opponent is doing. Um, as you can see, he's building a tractor. He's not going to finish it. I'm pretty sure he's not going to finish it. He's just there to piss him off. Um, it gives you more HP. So if you want to scout, you can just build something and get them to attack you, but they won't kill you. So just cancel it like you just did, and uh, and leave. So the strategic value is that it, it pisses them off. Um, it's a little nervous for the other guy to see someone running around their base watching their every move. And it lets you scout. Like you, get, you can tell if they're going to like do some cheap strategy and, and uh, rush. Let's say if they're Terran, you can scout them to see if they're going to um, Reaper rush. Um, both players, it looks like, are trying to build their first expansion. Um, the Protoss player did something interesting. He's building buildings next to the entrance slash exit to this base. There's only one aperture to his base. Um, and that's pretty strategic because it lets him concentrate where the battle is. If he's getting attacked, he can um, just put a couple units in the entrance. Um, as you can see, he built his buildings very close um, to kind of make it into a funnel to decrease the surface area. So if the in a one-on-one -on -one fight, a zealot will obviously win. They're more expensive and they're um, just beefier units. So you can do it like 300 style if someone tries to zerg rush you. Just um, have the pro a couple of zealots blocking off a ton of zerglings. That's why he built his buildings like that. Um, as you can see, uh, the zerg player, as I said, he's really good in the macro, as, as, as you saw from his extractor trick. But he's also being the Protoss in expansion. He already has a base up with workers coming out, um, which is defended with spine crawlers. Um, that's that's something else I should mention. As you can see, both of these very top tier, high level players built defenses um, near the second base, and that's strategic because uh, you you can save resources if you defend um, 
if you defend this one choke point leading up to your base. If you put defenses because there's only one entrance to your base, to your, to your base and your expansion, you can just defend that instead of defending one or the other. That's why he built the spine crawlers near his expo, and the Protoss player built his photon cannons um, near where presumably he will expand. Um, and that's because, um, like, let's say he built a spine crawlers here, that'd be too far back. They'd only defend his main base and not his expo. So that's something to watch out for. Of course, it doesn't defend against, let's say, someone bringing in drop ships, but. Um, you know, it's just a risk you're having to take. It's an RTS game. For every consequence, there are repercussions, both good and bad. And um, to get good at a game like StarCraft, you have to evaluate these repercussions, see what um, what's good in certain situations, what's bad in certain situations. Um, um, the the Zerg players um, pop capped right now. When I'm pop capped to Zerg, I just build buildings. Um, um, it looks like that's what he's trying to do because when you build buildings you lower your pop cap so you build more units and it's a way to spend resources to be good at Starcraft you should never really float resources I think I heard something from someone um, somewhere that pros never go above 200 minerals um, they're always spending if you're floating resources that's resources that could be going towards units or buildings or upgrades so you should always be spending as much money as possible. Um, another interesting thing that the Zerg player is doing is that he's floating his overlords over his buildings and that's strategic because um, when opponents attacking your base they're they have to right click obviously to get them to attack things. If there's an overlord floating over the buildings it's really hard to click on the buildings to attack them so that's just something um, strategic you can do if you have um, air units like overlords you can tell them to float over your buildings so they're hard to click on. Um, uh, as you can see, he's also moving his overlords out of the way. Um, he's scouting for expos. He's having far enough so he can retreat if like a marine comes up and shoots him, but it's close enough so he can like take a peek at the minerals to see if there's any drones or SCVs mining them. Um, 